Thank you, Dr. P.M. Vada, for kind words of introduction. Thank you, Dr. Mayur and Team Harmon India. Hello, Dr. Arvind Gupta, sir. Uh, we had a wonderful talk about the medical nutrition therapy in the management of obesity. Now we move on to the next part of this diabetes session that is pharmacotherapy for the management of obesity. So this is again to uh, reiterate the prevalence of obesity is rising. 650 million people as of now are living with obesity across the globe and we fall into the category of that part of the world which, which has a prevalence of approximately 10 to 20 percent people living with obesity and that's too high. And this is a forecast about the Overweight and obesity prevalence in India. Number of people living with women living with ob obesity in our country was 4.4% in 2010. It's going to threefold uh, by uh, 2040. That is 14% women and 9.5. That approximately 10% men would be suffering from obesity. And they are all going to have all these complications of obesity. That's this slide has already been shown by Dr. Ravind Gupta, sir. Metabolic, mechanical, mental health, anxiety, depression, asthma, NAFLD, we have already listened about NAFLD. Commonest cause of chronic liver disease down across the globe uh, is becoming uh, NAFLD. So, uh, cardiovascular complication, chronic back pain, type 2 diabetes, of course. So, these are the complications associated with uh, obesity, not to repeat again, but there is a progressive weight loss as a dose-dependent, incremental and tissue-dependent biological effect. Even a 5% weight loss in somebody who is uh, trying to lose weight by either by lifestyle intervention or by pharmacotherapy can lead to improvement in the liver sensitivity for uh, the patients of even type 2 diabetes, reduction in the liver fat content that is triglyceride, improvement in the beta cell function, Muscle insulin sensitivity, abdominal adipose tissue may come down and adipose tissue insulin sensitivity will come down. So these all factors are going to increase with further 5% weight loss. Majority of these uh, pathophysiological mechanisms which ultimately lead to the cardiovascular or many other complications of obesity may show an incremental benefit with further 5% weight loss. So 10% weight loss may lead to further reduction in the hepatic fat content. We have already listened to Dr. Sanjay Kumar. This is a known fact that 10% weight loss can lead to reversal of early NASH fibrosis in patients of NAFLD. Beta cell function improvement may further go up. Insulin sensitivity in the skeletal muscle may further go up. Abdominal adipose tissue may further come down. Adipose tissue insulin sensitivity may remain same with the further weight loss. But most important, one of the most important feature which may be seen with the further 5% or 6% weight loss is gene expression in subcutaneous adipose tissue. Probably this is one feature which is associated with long-term epigenetic changes leading to high, higher prevalence of future generation to come about the obesity and type 2 diabetes also. And if somebody is able to lose further 5% weight, at approximately more than 15% weight loss, liver triglyceride fat content will show further uh, improvement, beta cell function, insulin sensitivity, gene expression in the subcutaneous tissue, abdominal adipose tissue will show further improvement. Another improvement which is very remarkable here with the 15% weight loss is inflammatory markers, which are the surrogate markers for the many metabolic diseases like chronic kidney disease in type 2 diabetes, NAFLD, cardiovascular diseases, many malignancies. This may also come down with the more than 15% weight loss. So this is an incremental beneficial impact of the weight loss on the people of obesity. If with each percentage of weight loss, somebody is going to be benefited in some way or other. Then why do we need pharmacotherapy at all? We have so many fashion diet. We have low calorie diet, very low calorie diet, carbohydrate restricted diet, Atkin diet. So why do we need pharmacotherapy at all? Because obesity is not caused by a lack of willpower. It is not only always the hedonic factors which lead to overweight or obesity. It's not always overeating which may lead to obesity. It's a chronic disease and it has to be treated like a chronic disease. Body weight is generally influenced by the genetic, effect, genetic factors which are generally determining the set point for BMI. So every individual will have a set point for BMI, whether that individual is a lean individual or obese individual. And somebody who is trying to lose weight by the 
um, lifestyle measures or um, uh, intensive uh, behavioral therapy, this weight loss would be countered by the physiological adaptations which are homeostatically regulated and which facilitate the regain of whatever weight that person has lost with the lifestyle interventions. So this weight loss is again countered by the homeostatic mechanism by two main mechanisms. There is suppression of appetite in the long run and there is increased reduction in the energy expenditure which is more for the more than the expected for amount of weight person has lost. It is not about the uh, um, how fit, how rapidly person is losing weight. Amount of weight loss is, um, is the the reduction is energy expenditure is more than the expected uh, for the weight loss person has lost. And this weight loss by lifestyle done, which not only lead to suppression of appetite but also reduction in the both resting and non resting energy expenditure. This is how uh, it can we can here explain that how uh, uh, the there is a genetically determined set point for BMI for every individual. This is a study from approximately nine or ten Cameroon individuals who were made to overeat or they were adopting overfeeding practices for a period of approximately four to six months, and they put on a lot of body fat and body weight mass. But what when they return to their original diet? All of almost all of them they return to their original weight within two years time and original body fat mass also within two years time. So it is not only the obese individuals they have a set point for obesity. It is for the lean individuals also. We have seen many a times in, in our clinic that people come to us that we are not able to put on weight, especially adolescent males and females both, and they are not able to put on weight excess in, despite of the fact they are eating excessively. It is because of the set point for BMI for them also. If they try to overeat and put on weight, uh, the, the body fat mass increases and that lead to increase, increase in the leptin hormone levels that ultimately suppresses the appetite. So there is a set point for BMI for every individual, which is by and large determined genetically. That is why it is very difficult to maintain whatever weight somebody has lost with the lifestyle intervention in the long run. And that is the time when we need pharmacotherapy intervention for maintenance of lost weight. So this is the meta-analysis of almost 80 studies involving more than 26,000 people who were tried on different methods for the weight loss. This is a slightly old study when the newer drugs like GLP-1 analogs were not available and Cibitravin was still in use. This is a weight loss with advice only. So free advices do not cause weight loss. So this is a significant weight loss with the very low, very low energy diet. We can see here significant weight loss over the period of six months. But what, what we see here is the majority of the weight is regained over the period of long run. So those people seen here, those who people who are put on the pharmacotherapy in the form of early state or C vitamin, they maintain whatever weight, weight they have lost with the lifestyle intervention plus pharmacotherapy. So if, if somebody wants to maintain the weight loss for a longer period of time and rapidly lose weight, it is the pharmacotherapy plus lifestyle intervention which should be adopted because whatever weight somebody loses with the lifestyle intervention alone, majority of the people, they regain whatever weight they have lost in two to five years time. So this is again a slide to show the strong genetic predisposition to obesity. This is a study of... Uh, Twins who were either brought up in the same families or two different families, that means reared together or apart. There was a very strong correlation for body weight and BMI, whether obese, normal weight or, uh, or thin or lean uh, twins. There was a very strong correlation between the monozygotic twins, either they were raised together or they were raised in the different families. So this shows that there is a very strong genetic uh, predisposition to the body weight and to the BMI. So homeostatic regulation of body weight occurs in hypothalamus based on the inputs received about the short-term food intake and long-term energy stores. The arcuate nucleus of hypothalamus, there are two sets of interconnected neurons which are opposing each other's action about the energy balance. So those neurons expressing N uh, NPY, that is neuropeptide Y, and agouti-related peptide, they stimulate food intake 
while those expressing pro opio melanocortin these suppress the appetite the long term signaling from the periphery to the brain is received either from the blood stream or by the vagus nerve via the leptin hormone and insulin so these two hormones they regulate the long term energy stores of the body so what are whatever the treatment options we have available for management of obesity if we try lifestyle modification only we can lose up to 3 to 8% of the weight but if we try a combination of pharmacotherapy plus lifestyle modification the weight loss could be achieved up to 16% and you can see here this weight loss is even more than what the person can achieve with the gastric band uh, intervention so this approach could be probably the best approach in patients who are requiring weight loss before somebody is actually a candidate for the bariatric surgery so what are the principles of medication for management of obesity medicines they don't work by themselves they reinforce somebody's intention to lose weight and reduce the food intake catch the low hanging fruit first that those people who are taking some medicine which are causing weight gain like diabetic people who are taking bioglitazone or sulfonylureas if you have an option either stop those drugs first and put them on either sglt2 inhibitors or glp1 analogs because these drugs can cause weight loss which are associated with some people are taking antidepressant medicine some people are taking migraine prophylaxis anti epileptics are known to cause weight gain so you can discuss with their psychiatrist or neurophysicians if they can be switched over to either weight neutral medicines that would be a better choice so catch the low hanging fruit first before putting them on any pharmacotherapy for the management of obesity so these are biological adjunct to behavioral therapy not all medicine will work in all patient evaluate the efficacy in 12 to 16 weeks if weight loss is less than 5% you can either discontinue that drug or change or add another drug to that therapy if some in some if some in, in some point of the time if the weight loss plateaus this may not be a sign of loss of efficacy of that particular drug maintenance of weight loss is a sign of success so this is a common practice that patient loses some weight and that weight loss is not further uh, incremental so there is no further weight loss after 5 or 7% weight loss the people lose hope and they stop all the efforts including the pharmacotherapy this should be properly explained to the patient because maintenance of lost weight is very very important and maintenance of lost weight is a success of therapy not the failure of therapy so there is no ideal medication every medication has a different safety and tolerability profile pharmacotherapy when we come to the individual drugs orderly state is the only drug approved by our country for the management of obesity in non diabetic individuals drugs approved by fda and european medical agency are the orderly state glucopion naltrexone combination fentramin topiramate combination liraglutide in the doses of 3 mg and semaglutide latest latest drug approved for the management of obesity is 2.4 mg weekly injectable therapy i don't know why our our pharma people or our government agencies are not taking obesity is a serious disease that is was we are why we are not getting these drugs liraglutide 3 mg semaglutide 2.4 mg early in our country because i have heard about semaglutide there was a shortage of this drug in countries like australia so why our people are not bringing it to india this uh, this is not known to be only drug approved is early state which is not very potent drug to lose weight though it's a very safe drug it's a pancreatic lipase inhibitor blocks the absorption of 30% of the ingested fat the only safety concern are loss of fat soluble vitamins which can be um, uh, handled with uh, supplementation of some multivitamin tablets unpleasant steatorrhea which can be done with the very uh, proper counseling of the patient maximum weight loss is 5 to 7% it is also available as an otc product in some countries like european union and us at a lower doses of 60 mg should be given with meal to be effective another drug is contra which is available in european union and us also glucopion is a mild mild dopamine and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor as a single agent approved for the treatment of depression and smoking cessation so if your patient is obese and is suffering from depression and having 
uh, is habitual smoker, then the first drug of choice could probably be rupropion and naltrexone combination. But unfortunately, this is not available in our country. Probably of the level some people are using available online by the India Mart, but not the uh, label indication in our country. Naltrexone blocks the auto inhibitory feedback that is associated with decline in weight loss due to lifestyle measures. This combination may also regulate mesolimbic system, which is associated with the hedonic factor contributing to the obesity, like smell of the food, taste of the food. So these are the hedonic factor which also contribute to the uh, weight gain in people who are genetically determined to put on weight. Fenteramine topiramate combination. Fenteramine is a sympathomimetic agent which affects both food intake and increases the energy expenditure. Weight loss mechanism with topiramate is not completely understood, might be associated with decreasing appetite and feeling of fullness after meal, which lasts a little longer than usual. So if some of your patient is taking sodium valproic acid or valproate for the epilepsy, you can request your, or for the migraine prophylaxis for that matter, you can request the treating physician or neurophysician to switch that patient to topiramate for the migraine prophylaxis. It's a good drug for the migraine prophylaxis also. So, so that this is a probably, if it doesn't cause any weight, this would be a weight neutral therapy. So uh, though the sodium valproate causes significant weight gain in some of the individuals. So this is a low hanging food. GLP-1 analog, this is the most promising class of drug for the weight loss. GLP-1 analog, they actually affect the set point for BMI by their effect on the hypothalamus. Additional effects are delaying up the gastric emptying and some effect on through the peripheral mechanisms like insulin sensitivity also goes up, insulin secretion also goes up, glucagon secretion goes down. This drug is approved by both US FDA and European Medical Agency for the management of obesity in the doses of 3 mg daily. Semaglutide approved by USFD and the doses of 2.4 mg. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sanjeev, we'll have one minute more. Yeah. Okay, weekly injectable therapy. Latest drug is trigepatide action on both GIP and GLP-1. Weight loss is up to 20% in the clinical trial. Approved for the management of diabetes recently in US. This is the trial for the obesity management for semaglutide. This, this leads to up to 17 weight loss and weight loss is sustained for a period of up to 68 weeks in those people who were replaced with placebo they gained weight in this step 4 trial for the semaglutide so i will not go into detail of this drug Sema is the latest drug in the pipeline no one that nordis has recently concluded the phase 2 clinical trial for this drug significant a1c reduction 2.2 percent and weight loss up to 17 percent can be seen with this drug if, if, if at all this comes to the market so this is the algorithm for the management of obesity. Those people, BMI more than 30 and BMI more than 27 with comorbidities, they can be put on pharmacotherapy apart from the lifestyle measures. First drug of choice for those people who are having diabetes, pre-diabetes, hypertension, OSA is liraglutide. Uh, if they do not tolerate and if this fails, then naltrexone, glucopion combination would be the second drug. For those people who are having food craving, depression, or excessive smoking, the naltrexone glucopion combination would be the first drug. But in our country, this could be liraglutide again, though it is not approved for the management of obesity. If this therapy fails in three months, then that means less than 5% weight loss, then you can add second drug or replace it by the another drug. So these are the take-home messages. Obesity is a chronic disease. Majority of the patient in intensive behavioral therapy regain pre-therapy weight because of the genetic set point for the obesity leads to reduction in both resting and non-resting energy expenditure. Pharmacotherapy should be considered in all appropriate patients at early stage to achieve optimum result. Most drugs approved by USFD are studied for a chronic use and are safe in rightly selected patients. GLP-1 analogs, they offer a new optimism for the management of obesity. Now, a twin creatine also will be available in few years to come. Thank you very much for the patient listening.